Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb, and you're about to get blown up. Welcome back, wrestling fans, to the Buckle Bomb, the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. I am your host, Buck Bomber, joined again by my co-host, Michael Arrow. The undisputed Buckle Bomb champion, the undisputed co-host here to stay, and we have a very, very special guest. Why don't you tell the people who it is? We have the one and only Lady Bird Monroe back in the bomb shelter. Hello. How are y'all? Glad I'm good. Back. I'm good. I'm I good. am fantastic. Happy to have you back on the podcast. Thanks so, for having me. As I ask at the beginning of every episode, how's wrestling? It's good. I love wrestling. I'm finally back um, at almost 100% after the ACL tear, so I'm loving it again. Nice, nice. Michael? Uh, I'm doing good. I was going to say, Lady Bird, it is great to see you back out there. I've been noticing all the bookings you'll be getting. Uh, I have been doing pretty good. Uh, January is going to be very busy, so I'm looking forward to it. Nice. nice. Yeah, like I noticed, Lady Bird, on social media, you put your availability, and yes. I was like, should I do that? And I was like, <laughs> yes. it'd look really sad. Just everything is open. <laughs> well, then you don't have to do the whole flyer. Just say, I'm open for bookings. Right. And then a nice headshot. That's what I would do. That's what I do. I don't I don't put my bookings out there. I just say, hey, book me. And if they want to book me, they can reach out. If it doesn't work, then we'll make it work. You know, it's just about being on social and active. You're right. It's just being out there and having people see you. Right. And I've let the greenback social just be nothing for like. A minute now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Uh, so speaking of your ACL, do you guys ever like break anything? Just anything at all? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I got the idea for this episode because I, I live in a in a home that I'm refurbishing nice. and uh, I went to fix one of the sinks uh, yesterday. Uh, the sink is now more broken, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So I thought, man, things sure do break. Yes. Especially in professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that. Um, you ever work in a ring that like suddenly broke? No, have you? <laughs> One of <Fine>. my <laughs> first memories at AAPW, it was like maybe like the first couple of weeks, maybe like second or third week I was in class, and you were running the ropes, Mr. Buck Bomber. Can, can I tell my story? Well, can I tell my story? I was already telling okay. my story. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> fight, fight. I mean, it fight, happened. Fight. It happened. Hey, that's that's part of the buckle bomb now. It's me and Michael Arrow fighting. Yeah, that's, um, that's be great noise, like soothing wrestling noise. Why don't you go ASMR. ahead and tell the story? Well, I remember Austin James was was running the ropes. We were doing rope running drills, and then I remember he said, "I think something's wrong with the ropes." <laughs> um, and everyone was like, "Nah, it's fine." No, hey, I was not the one. Somebody said. I was Mr. Green Boy. I was not the one saying, oh, the ropes are fine. Someone else might have said that. I was an innocent bystander in this. Did I say, did I say, I meant to say, okay, I meant to say Austin James. It was Austin James because then you hit the ropes. You hit the ropes just fine. And then I went to go hit the ropes and the rope broke and I did a flip out of the ring. Um, And I, I... I got lucky that I that I I hit my head on the apron. Oh just my. very very. You fell on me. I was standing I right there. <laughs> I was standing maybe like three feet away from me. I did kind of run in to try to catch you. Well, I appreciate Aww. that. I don't remember that part at all, See, but I appreciate the side it. Of the story he was trying to tell. So. Well, okay. New... See how biased he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased too. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm surprised that you didn't get really hurt at all, except hitting your head a little bit. I got. Very lucky. Also, part of it was I remembered my training. Uh, always grab the middle rope. I yep. used to only do it sometimes. So I was like, so lame. But now I'm like, no, grab grab the middle rope. That was, no, but seriously. you know, like I was there really early on in my training. And that was really eye-opening that the little stuff like that does matter. It does matter to put your hand on, on both ropes or um, – you can also use your training if you get thrown over the top rope to put your hand down for the apron. If it breaks, you know, that's just another instinctual um, safety net that mm-hmm. you have. So, your head. Mm-hmm. um, 
all that stuff really like made me pay more attention to the little things just because it, it protects you and keeps you that much more safer mm-hmm. when you least expect it. Yeah. Yeah. So when you tumbled out, you just hit the concrete and were like, well, that was crazy. Or were you still hanging on to the, the rope? No, I was I was on the outside. Um, I landed on my I landed on my behind. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's nice. I landed on the apron. He like flipped over. There was like a few people with me like standing around him. Trying to catch him. He, I, I'm pretty sure he just like flopped on the apron. <laughs> flopped. And <laughs> no. I'm sorry. For I hit my he- words. I hit my head on the apron and then I rolled the rest of the way out. <laughs> and something that makes this even more hilarious is I think it was my very first day at AAPW where I was sitting on the far back wall with my uh, bag, like putting my shoes on and greenback or Buck Bomber, excuse me. Hey, everybody knows it's fine. <laughs> you should bleep it out whenever someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, you tumbled over the top rope and pretended like you were hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used it was to a do total that. work. I used to do that all the time. He was trying to, he to was, explain. He was trying to rib everybody. I, I used to work the beginners. Like every time I would just be like, hey, you guys want to see something cool? <laughs> and then I would I would go out over the top rope and I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> ah, ah, oh, God. Oh, get pops. Oh, oh, no. So you cry wolf for when you actually break the, <laughs> break the ring. You're like, oh, yeah, wait, he really is hurt. <laughs> see, the thing about it is when I really do get hurt, I stay super quiet because oh, I'm like, I don't want anybody to know how hurt I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was the top rope that broke? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And and just, uh, just disclaimer, in the four years I've been here, I've only, and we're, uh, one of the rings we use is, um, is like a legacy ring that like legends have been in mm-hmm. lots of, it's, 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 it's been around a minute, but in my four coming on five years of being here, I've only ever seen each bro, blah, 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 bro, uh, <laughs> rope break once. Um, one, uh, the first time was me breaking the top rope. Second time was actually Prince Adam breaking the middle rope. Oh, uh, interesting. He like jumped at it to do, you know, some of his Prince Adam stuff. Yeah, Prince Adam stuff. I then just, oh, shit. Yeah. And third time, now th- this one really makes sense. Um, unlike Adam, it's like, it's like, wow. Really, Adam was the straw that broke the camel's back there. Um, but um, third time it was the bottom rope, and it was Eli Schwartz. Oh, I miss uh, that guy. I do too. How did he? How? Because he was stepping up on the bottom or something. Um, he was like, you know, you know how we train at AAPW. We're like, everybody should at least try to do something. When it's like, you see a guy as big as Eli Schwartz, you're like, yeah, he, that's yeah. not a guy who's going to be doing up and overs a lot. But they no. were like, okay, just you know, get to the get to the corner. <laughs> Jump on the bottom rope and then up and over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he did it and then just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And those are the only three ropes I've ever seen break here. All of them. Now that's impressive. Yeah, ever since they've been replaced, um, they've been fine. Don't know how long they were around for before that. So. That it was before me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know what could happen, and I'm going to tell a story and ask if you can relate to it. Have you ever been to? A show where you see a ring and you're just like, ooh, oh, I yeah. don't know about <laughs> All this one. All the time. So my story, I mean, this happens way too often that it should. But um, I was in Illinois and they were setting up the ring and the first match started. And the ropes like didn't break per se, but maybe they did. But they, they were just they droopy. loosened up. Yeah. They were way mm-hmm. droopy. And you could kind of tell, luckily, you know what? I was the opening match. I was like, the, what do you call it? Like the before the show match? Like the dark match but or something? Yeah, that's what I was. So, Free show. And we didn't even really use the ropes that much, but they were fine for us. And it was actually the, the show opener where it where it fell on. And it was interesting to see how all the other workers Had dealt with it. Mm-hmm. Because you could tell a good wrestler, um, me and my friend were like by the curtain watching and this dude walks up and he just says, how are the ropes? And we're just like, no. He's like, <laughs> Don't use them. He's like, dang it. And we see his match and he did not use the ropes. Nice. He kept it all in the middle of the ring, kept the crowd in. It was great. And then you just see all these other people trying springboards and just hitting the ropes. It's, it's obviously it's not working. Like <laughs> change it up. Uh, do you have any stories like that? I have never experienced. I'm, I'm all, 
I've seen that a bunch, but I've never had the experience of them being super loose for me. Um, usually if I see that they're loose before a show and I go and test them out, I just don't use the ropes either. Or maybe one, like maybe I'll run them, like hit the rope once or twice, but I try to stay away from them. Right. And that's a lot uh, harder than uh, than said than done than, uh, you know, oh, I'm just going to take this complete arsenal idea out of the whole match <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's not going to work. And someone small like me, I don't know if you really do high fly stuff. But, no, but yeah, that's something to um, fall back on. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when you have that um, taken away from you, you really have to see what else you have in your arsenal. And it's uh, impressive. Maybe like chaining and stuff. Right. It's impressive to me to see how people adapt to it because we say, you know, things break or whatever, but it's really just a hurdle, you know? Yeah. And how do you get around it? It's a test. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's really impressive to me to see people can work around that stuff like that. So, yeah, it is pretty expensive to maintain a ring. So I've I've been around a few that have had some – quirks it's, uh, it's yeah. a lot of hard work too people might not realize right like yeah like generally like most people don't have the luxury of just having their ring assembled and in one place like forever uh -huh, um yeah. generally when you work an indie show um they're renting a facility they're using someone else's facility sometimes right. and, yeah and, and like and or someone else's ring mm-hmm and generally they workers come in and uh, you know workers as in wrestlers yeah. come in and assemble it and um they might not know what they're doing. You know, yeah. <laughs> some some people might like say that they're above that, but I really kind of take pride and enjoy like setting up the ring because not only I feel like I'm doing something to the business, but you really get to see what you're in for, and you really get to see like, oh, there's a <laughs> this board is broken, or oh, there's gonna be a gap right here, or the ropes don't look too great. So um, not only do you get to like set it up and get in the ring quicker, but you can actually figure out what's going on and figure out, okay, How to fix it. maybe I'm not going to do any high and flying stuff tonight <laughs> or don't bump over here or whatever. I'm not yeah. going to take any apron bumps tonight. That's another thing I notice is that sometimes like the apron of the ring is really well protected or just not at all. Yeah. So that's something I really Oh, like no for. padding on right, it? Right, like the edge of the ring, the apron. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like I would see the padding like folds over. I'm like, yeah. okay, this this is good to bump, but the other side would just be boards oh, course, and a yeah. sharp edge. You're like, yeah. oh. So. so one thing that I've always practiced because it was what I was taught is when you show up to work a show, it, if, if there's not already like marks there and like surrounding the ring, hop in that, you know, say hey, shake hands, yep. hop in that ring, test it out, figure it out, fill the ropes, st stomp around, take a bump. <laughs> yeah, because like I've 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 shown up and I've been like these ropes are no good. Um, I remember one time I'm I'm not gonna put him put him on blast because he's a much improved uh, worker since, but um, is bringing bringing a younger person with me or you know younger in the business, uh, younger than me age wise too because I'm old. But um, I I saw him go for his match and I I saw him going for a move where he um, jumps up onto the top rope uh, uh, or to the middle. You know somebody picks him up and then he kind of jumps across the top rope and. He goofed it, and I was like, somebody didn't check the ropes, because I was like... Oh, they were too loose? Yeah. And he just fell? Yeah, he just kind of... Well, he, like, stumbled through it. Oh, um, shit. It didn't look great. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, yep. Because, like, what you really got to look out for is boards. If they're, like, popped up, if you're going to trip or yeah. something in there? Yeah. I've, like... One time I went to a show, and we were walking around the ring, and we're like, something isn't right. And we took the canvas off, uh -oh. and there was straight up like one board like laying across the other, the other other way, <laughs> the opposite like, way. Like over, it was overlapping. It was just like on top of all the other boards, and what? we're just like, how do you not check? <laughs> you something's obviously wrong. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's why I like to try and set up the ring, and it follows your role too. It puts you in the ring. If you don't set it up, go check it out. See mm -hmm. what you're in for. <laughs> so yeah, we don't have any of those incidents where you're right. falling out of the ring or and the luckily, rope breaks. Right, and luckily I haven't really seen anything uh, too too horrendous. I think I pretty much got to the most of it. Um, some things, this is random that really kind of, it's a pet peeve of mine when people don't set up the turnbuckle pads correctly and they're just like sagging, drooping, hanging there yep. <laughs> instead of protecting the corner. <laughs> it's just not tight enough. Yeah, like um, they don't put the zip ties or tie it, so it's not like, like center, put, right? Mm -hmm. it, it'll just be hanging. Drooping. So they're not hitting this corner tonight, I guess. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll admit one thing. I'll admit one thing. 
I try to like front load my help with um, assembling the ring, like bringing stuff in because one thing I can't do to save my life is tie down the canvas. It's hard. Um, and everybody does like a weird different knot. <laughs> everyone like, does it differently. I worked for one company that they just use bungee cords and I love it. It's oh, so that easy. Is, that does sound it's nice. It's so easy. Yeah, other than like stringing a whole thing around the ring and then tying it all together. It's like, why don't, why don't, we, why don't we do it like that? We could just all use bungee cords. Um, this actually just reminded me of another story. I was working at a company in San Antonio and we show up and the ropes weren't set up. They weren't like broken per se. I forgot why. But they were like, all right, guys, we're going to do a whole show with no ropes. And actually, it ended, up, it actually ended up being a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed it. But Wait, so it was just like uh, it was just the ring with posts. There was there were no ropes, and it was elevated, so it was like it was, it was the ring. Up. Yeah, the, the ring was set up. It was, there was just no ropes. It was just that was, seems so dangerous. So um, there's an indie company that used to do. I think they still do it on Mania Weekend. They do a show called Bloodsport, where it's that gimmick. Um, they do a gimmick show with no ropes, and they do it more like MMA style, where it's like no pins, it's submission, knockout only. Oh, okay, and. It's really interesting to see how they work that because the good workers will do like chain and then just start transitioning into like submissions and, mm, and yeah. suplexes and stuff. Yeah. But uh, for us, it was just like, all right, we don't have ropes today, boys. Outside stuff. <laughs> uh, and you know what? It was in a mall and um, I had a lot of fun. We wrestled this dude. Um, I guess I'm not dropping names because I haven't. So uh, we had a great match. He, we brawled around the mall a little bit and it was just another fun thing to do. Um Try to uh, change up your normal plan. Can't use ropes. Can't high flying. What are you gonna do? So um, another uh, obstacle averted. Have you guys ever been to a part of the show where maybe like the ring isn't broken, but something else might be broken to where it like really affects the show? Oh man, you really you really tossed me the ball, and I can take it to the end zone now. Um, everything at AAPW is broken <laughs> or it was and i've been fixing it for months um like just i mean people have mentioned the stream's been getting better uh over time because everything we had was broken <laughs> um yeah but that i i have i have dealt with that and i've also uh i've also worked shows where um you know uh, in other places where they couldn't get the music working that was yeah. awesome I was there for that, and I, I think which it, time? I think when I was there, it was more incompetence and <laughs> not necessarily like the machine a was broken. Issue. Yeah, it was like they didn't know what song. I don't know what was going on, and Buck Bomber was in full Greenback character, screaming at him for his entrance, and I loved every second it's of it. Perfect for him. It was <laughs> awesome. It was totally in character. It was a total like curveball moment that he just hit out of the park. Wow. I loved it. I don't, you don't even remember what I'm talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> I'll tell you later. I don't. Um, <laughs> I mean, it does sound like I. being a heel, it is nice when my music doesn't play. I can just walk out and yell, turn on my damn music, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> um, one, one of these days I want to do that, and then I want to walk back behind the curtain <laughs> and then go, Wait ah! for it. <laughs> Wait for them um, to turn it on. It's great. Yeah. Um, but um, I remember one time um, bringing up Prince Adam again. Um, remember one time this was at a at an IckyCon show. Um, we couldn't get the sound to work, and then Adam just comes out and he starts singing Bohemian Rhapsody. Hell yeah! And the crowd joined in, and I was like, "This is one of those like magic human moments yeah, that can happen at a pro wrestling badass. show." <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and God bless Adam. <laughs> You know, I mean, he was able to do it in a great babyface way. But one of my favorite heel moments is them not walking out with any music. And they have to have enough heat with the crowd to where the crowd just completely craps on them and boos them. Mm -hmm. Because when that just, like, weighs over everything and there's no music and there's just, like, thousands of fans yelling at this one dude, that is awesome. You know who works it really well? Steve. Steve Arena, the pinfall wizard, ever since he's been doing his wizard gimmick. Um, and there's a, there's a video of it. It's really funny. Um, he, wa he walked out one time and there was no music and the crowd was completely silent. And then he just goes, yes, my silence spell is working. <laughs> and then that, that, got a, that, got a, that got a pop from the crowd. And I was like, 
That's that's good. Quick that's thinking. Nice. Yeah. Um you ever break any bones in the ring? Not in wrestling. No, I broke only one bone and I was in like fourth grade. <laughs> I broke my collarbone. Um have I had like any serious wrestling injuries? Thankfully no. Oh my goodness. Um I'm lucky. Uh, of course I like one time I banged up my elbow. My elbow was like this like three or four times its size than it should have been. Uh because I you know what? I don't really wear elbow pads anymore. But when I first started training, I was wearing them, and then I took them off, and then I was bumping wrong, I guess. I don't know if it was landing elbows first or what, but yeah. um, bruised them really bad. And then now I don't wear them anymore. It doesn't really happen, which is funny. But uh, no, thankfully, no. I haven't really had any uh, major injuries or anything like that. Yeah. Not yet. I mean, I've I've had I've had like minor things happen. Um, the only time I've ever actually broken a bone was in middle school. I got a hairline fracture on my wrist. Oh yeah, and that was it. You know um, what's funny? Sorry to cut you off. Is now that I think about it, I have been told that you almost died a couple times. Oh gosh. Um, and some of them, I like realized it in the moment. I'm like, oh, I almost died. I almost landed on my head. I was gonna say up, something upside down. And. Later. um Another time I was working with somebody and they lift me up and I wasn't like turned the right way. And I guess I didn't really like, this is when I didn't really realize in the moment. Um, he slammed me safely. And then later he was like, what the heck? You almost died. And I was like, you know what? I, I, <laughs> you're right. I felt like it didn't go up right, but I was there and you dropped me. Okay. So I didn't think anything of it, but yeah, I almost died. And another one was, uh, <clears throat> I was doing a suicide dive and the dude like ducked <gasps> and catch you. I think it was more, he got scared rather than like, I don't want to catch you. Interesting. But, um, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm no, it wasn't <laughs> no I, I know. I know. It wasn't no, me. honestly, it wasn't you, me. you have caught me every time and yeah. I really appreciate it. It's really funny. Uh, me and Michael arrow have this one thing we oh argue about all the uh, time. What? <laughs> Do it. Spill the tea. Um, so, uh, one time I caught him on a dive and, <laughs> What? He came in a little high and he hit me in the head, but then he's like, well, you had your head down. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> Am I supposed to go in low on a dive? Well, I... You said I came in high. That's that's the problem? Okay, so here's what happened. Let's see, you were about to go... <laughs> it's about... You were about to go over that's me. That's a risky move for anyone, so... I, that's, I, that's my big boy when... I still caught you. When I want to do a big impressive spot, I'll do a crossbody from the top rope to the outside. Oh, yeah, nice. And I had... Greenback actually caught me twice. Oh um, yeah. But the first time, uh, dude, watch the tape. You're on your feet. I don't know why your head's down. The, I was selling. The guy you were. <laughs> it's T-Ray. Okay. T-Ray caught me. It was there. It was fine. Oh, T-Ray is more than enough to catch you. It was supposed to be both of them, though? Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's more insurance. Um, yeah, fair. I, the first time I did the spot was with Jose Valiente. Uh, it was Manny's son. He doesn't really come around too much. But, um. We were going to do it with just him and me, and we practiced the spot so many times, and I still couldn't quite get it right to where uh, they added Manny into it. So it was both of them catching me, and ever since then, I'm like, cool. If I have two people, I'm doing the spot, um, which I've thought about bringing. I've, I've been thinking about getting more reckless. I might pull out my bags of tricks more, but that's, uh, that's more for a later day. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll be there to catch you, <laughs> even if you come up too high and hit me in the head. I appreciate you, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, the other time I caught you was fine. That one was a good match. I really like that. That was with Black, right? Yeah. That was. That, I think that's one of my favorite matches I've had. At there's, AAPW? Yeah. Um, that one, there's a few more. Um, like the, Jose Valiente, I mentioned. He had. We had a great feud and a great um, Halloween match. I lost my hair. I'm sure you've I heard remember, the story. Yeah. I think I've seen that. Wait, um, did I? I don't know. Maybe I saw a lot. Were you there for that? I Maybe. No, it was I actually was years wasn't. ago. Um, I think it was right before. It was, here. it was like my it was my first year, my first Halloween show. And man, I talk about talking about heat earlier. All the heat he got, I still think about like all the I think that's like the biggest packed house we've had. Maybe like some of the drag shows get close. But that first Halloween show I was here for, like, there's maybe two hundred people in the building, all screaming at Jose, wanting to kill him. I'm pretending like I'm crying. Pops is shaving my head. Oh, now tell you all this that no one else knew this because they're all screaming at Jose and he was yelling at them over the mic and I was sitting 
in the chair and pops was cut my hair and him and Lawrence I was trying not to laugh this whole time this whole tense moment I'm pretending like I'm crying yeah you're I dumped sad. water mm-hmm. on my face having my hair pops is like man this will look good you got a nice giant <laughs> head Lawrence walks up he's like no nah, man it ain't gonna look better than mine and I'm trying so hard not to laugh <laughs> <laughs> wow, everyone's trying to like kill Jose. So were you a face in that one? I was a face. Okay. I was a face. I was crying because I was getting my hair cut. Um, it's a big... Um, you had stip- long hair too, right? It's My hair's getting there again, but yeah, it was like closer to my butt. I cannot decide what to do with my hair. It's a problem. I just keep growing it out. I'm thinking about cutting it short again. But I just don't style it. I don't know what to do with it. We're talking the the topic of the week is my hair now. Um, ah. <laughs> get a good blow dryer. <laughs> Give yourself a blowout. That might be right. nice. But what the what the trick of my hair is is I'll I'll brush it and then I won't brush it for a few days and it'll curl up and every girl wants to kill me for for my hair. Oh, because it has pretty curls. Yeah, and it does it by itself. I like you got to keep it long then. All the girls in high school would like always want to do my hair and they get jealous. One girl straight up told me, you don't deserve it. That's not fair. <laughs> She's like, every time I curl my hair, Michael, I want it to look like yours. It's because you don't mess with it as much. That's why. It's natural. I started balding in high school. That's rad. No. That's my, dad, uh, my dad started getting grays in high school. Is that, <laughs> is that just as bad? No. Nah, man. I, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm waiting, to, I'm waiting to gray. I'm like, man, I'm going to look so good. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be a great old man. Um but um no yes, I can't relate. Um my hair is like the longest it's been in a while now because it's been like three weeks. Listen, <laughs> let me help you out. Let me cut my hair, we'll donate it, we'll get, yeah. you're looking nice. Just just glue some onto my head. <laughs> well, you know how they do it, they make wigs out of it. Yeah. The locks of love, yeah. So Yeah, we can... just cut out the middleman and just put Exactly. Just I'll cut my hair, we'll we'll make it look nice, we'll figure out what style you want. And then we'll get that touch of gray for you. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, but speaking of breaking things, hey, remember that time you broke your ACL and then you like worked an entire like battle royale still? <laughs> that was uh, tore my ACL. You can't break. Yeah, I, guess I was you, about to. Well, you break. I guess your ligament tears. So yeah. <coughs> but yeah. I mean, it's bad enough. Crazy. We can call it a break. It's <laughs> yeah, fine. I, yeah. Honestly, yeah, that was crazy. What, what is the saying? ACL anyway? I thought it was like a. Boy. It's a ligament. It's the top oh, it's a part ligament. of your leg. Uh, yeah, it's in the right in the kneecap. Knee, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I always thought it was like at the on the back of the calf or something. That's just. Oh no! Yeah, right in the knee. You have like three ligaments. Your ACL, I think it's MCL and PCL. I could be wrong. So is that like the MCL biggest... is my rap name? <laughs> is that like the worst injury you've had in your life? Yeah, I've yeah. never like I've never broke a bone. I've never had any serious injury, and then wrestling my first one ever <laughs> and, and it sucked because i was a year in so yeah. and i was just kind of getting going i just got my start i was getting booked at a, a good amount of places it doesn't ever just... happen at a good time god you were no, gonna be on it <laughs> fucking doesn't you were gonna be on aew dark the next week yeah yeah um and then you even dived out of the ring um yeah speaking of people throwing you outside a ring and no one only one person there to catch you there was supposed to be a group when i when they threw me out during the that battle royal um and yeah it was just houston he was the only one we put houston hendrix over for that moment all the time what a hero i know he was at three people two left and then he was like there his little self he was so new right too. is yeah is he like smaller than you yes he is and he like caught me from warsaw throwing me out of the ring dude he like <laughs> he just kind of looked like he died when he <laughs> grabbed you um it's great but it was like hell yeah that that kid's got like some good moral fibers in him i know to be there what what would have happened if he wasn't there just chunked me out with a bad knee already i I think i think warsaw probably would have gone oh he just maybe like toppled me over and i can hit the apron and fall out maybe something like that yeah gosh always call an audible for sure i don't think warsaw would have just checked you out no i don't think so either but yeah that's crazy not uh Related to breaking specifically, but um, has anything else in the match fallen apart to where you're like, oh, no, I need to figure out what's going on? No, I'm very fortunate. My matches, I haven't had anything that's been like a freak out other than just sometimes forgetting a spot or something. But sure, you know, you know, that happens to everyone. That, yeah, that happens to everyone and get back on the same page. I've worked a few matches outside to where... Uh, I'm standing in the ring. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it's usually after doing some I big opener and you're like, okay, now what? Well, it was <laughs> like, next? with this situation in particular, is like a six-man tag. And oh, gosh. We're yeah. like, 
we did the finish spot, but the finish finish didn't happen, and the guy who was like <laughs> was supposed to be taking the pin is oh. like getting offense on my um, on my partner, and I'll just say I don't really like this guy. Um, so I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I go pick up his partner who was like selling on the outside of the ring. And this was awesome. I pick him up, I throw him in the ring and he's like, what, what, that's it. We're done. I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on. Wait, so someone was pinned? Was there, was there a three count or? No. So what, what was supposed to happen was we knocked out the two, it was a six man tag. We knocked out two of the guys. And the third guy on their team was supposed to take the finish uh, from our partner. But for some reason, he decided, no, I'm going to get my offense in right now. So he's getting over on doing, I don't know what he's doing, his offense on this guy. And I'm like, this was it. This was supposed to be the finish. What is going on? I'm obviously not going to go to that dude because he doesn't know what's going on. So I go outside to his partner who was selling outside, pick him up. I forgot what I said exactly. Or he said something like, hey, I thought we were done. What's going on? I just said, I don't know what's going on. Threw him in the ring, hit my finish, pinned oh, him. there you go. Was it even the right guy in? It wasn't. No. Well, I guess it didn't matter. The guy was who was supposed to be taking the pin was doing offense for some reason. He said, "I'm screw your, screw your finish. So were people tagging in? It was like a like tag? Or was it's, it just? It was a, it's a lucha show. So they okay, don't really It didn't care. really they matter. As long as someone got pinned. <laughs> <laughs> right. So things weren't going on track. I grabbed a dude and said, hey, take this, pinned him, and uh, went backstage. And they gave me a lot of credit because they were like, hey, you realized what Thanks you did to be done. Thanks for figuring Right. Yeah. And um, I would say like early in my career, it's still early in my career. When I first started training and getting into matches, that would happen kind of more often. And now I think I've, for the most part, figured out matches and I just do bullet points. And you're not going to know what goes in between sometimes, mm -hmm. but you know, okay, we did X, Y, so Z's next and then whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I do the, I do the bullet point thing too. Uh, it's been forever since so a word match. Um, the nice thing about managing is all I have to care about is the bullet points. Ugh, um, that's so fun. It is. It is. Um, the women are a little different. We tend to call every little bit of a match, which is a problem. It's not. A, it's not great because then it's not as candid and like realistic as it could be when you're going to the bullet points. You have right. more of those moments where you have to really think outside of the box and like right. be a worker. So that's that's know, so um, sometimes I'll work with someone and and I think they're like calling too much. Oh yeah, do you do you say like no man or? Um, I kind of like nicely as I can try to um, just say okay, we don't really need to worry about in between this spot or don't worry about the heat. If you want to do something specific, let me know. Um, I just kind of more emphasize the bullet points. I'm just like, look, this is all we got to worry about. Yeah, beginning, the end, and. Come back, pee, whatever, shine, just a little bit there. Don't overcomplicate it. And I've gotten used to telling them, like, hey, I'm not going to remember all this. This is too much. Yeah, let's, yeah, because it's honest, a, too. Right. Like, what are they going to do? Let's, let's dumb it down a little bit, make it a little bit more simpler. And then um, when you get farther into your training, it gets uh, more easier to, to do those complicated spots. Um, I'll put him over. One thing I really like about Zach Taylor is the way he works and calls spots. Um, he surprised the heck out of me one day when we were just standing on the ring. He grabbed me and just started calling stuff. Oh, hell yeah. And I was able to follow, and I was doing pretty advanced, like, you know, indie, you know, his style, like the yeah. indie stuff. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I did all this. How, were you, how did you call all of that to me oh so gosh, easily? That's just, that's, he's a good worker. That's tough. That's challenging. I, absolutely. So there's like, this, there's like this next level, as far as being a worker goes, where like, I don't know, and I've I've only I've only ever like even done a few things in practice where this has happened. There comes a point where someone's good enough that they can like move you like a puppet mm -hmm. and right. make you wrestle on yeah. them, and um, you look good still. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I worked with I. It was just it was just practice. It was just um with uh once oh, yeah. just just once He's just awesome. once uh. <laughs> He somehow maneuvered me back behind him and into a hold, and I'm just like. So you had the hold on him. Yes. Oh, cool. I'm yeah. just like, okay, that's pre that's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for getting me into that. Yeah. Wow. We. <laughs> um. This is rad. Um. 
But yeah, there are some guys who are at that point. Um, and but it takes years and years, years. and years yeah. and yep. years to get there. Yeah, but it's it's amazing when it happens. I it's know. Like, I'm just wow. waiting for it. I wish I can just fast forward and be at that point already. Sometimes, but it's about the journey, right? Not the destination. Yeah, gotta keep reminding myself that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a match where you didn't call anything? No yeah. bullet points. You uh, just go in there and you figure it out. So nope. Adam, <laughs> when we were training, there was like a month or two where that was like his focus. <laughs> like for a week, for a few weeks, he would just pick two guys, put them in the ring together and just say, give me a match. And at first I hated it. And at first I like. Because you freak out a little bit. I didn't want to do it. But then I got used to it and I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a moment where it kind of clicked. And I'm like, okay, we all know what the what the parts of the match should be um, and just making it work. Yeah, um, it's just kind of like I was talking about earlier. The difficult thing is just having those specific spots you want to do and able to communicate it, especially yeah. if it's a long spot mm-hmm. um, or if it's someone you don't work anymore or you haven't worked before and they don't specifically know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I come from skateboarding. I was a skateboarding kid growing up um, and there's about like three to four names for every trick. And with with wrestling, it's almost like some moves have like three to four yeah, different similar. names. Mm-hmm. Um, so they might know what you're talking about. They just don't know that. <laughs> um, so there's breaking that uh, barrier too. But um, I I kind of like working that way and not having to call the whole lot. Just having a little bit of pieces and being able to fill the blanks. And especially if you have like a gimmick match or something like that, it makes it way oh, yeah. easier. Yeah. Um, it's funny that this match I'm talking about um, had its genesis on this podcast <laughs> with oh. Chen. Um, Buck Bomber asked me, hey, what can we do for a, a Christmas-related match? And then we had the White Elephant match. And, uh, with all the um, gifts. Right. And that was um, something really easy to do because you just rely on the gimmick, rely on the gifts. And um, I think we were able to work that really well. So um, I think gimmick matches for me – they're just easier. Yeah, I agree. From the from the few that I've worked, yeah, they're so fun too. You Unless you get the shit out of each other, right? Basically, and then you add. <laughs> yeah, you had some great like trash can matches and, and stuff. I remember those are one. fun. Oh, just just the one. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for my next one. <laughs> I'm ready. They're so good. What's your favorite giving match as a fan? Was there any like you you would really get stoked on? I I think tables, maybe ladders. I think thumbtacks would be cool. I used but I want to get paid well for that one. Oh no, thumbtacks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would take that. Maybe I'll like work my way into it. But you know, as a kid, they got old because they do them so much. But I did really the like thumbtacks. No, oh, I was going to talk about the, like the ladder matches. Oh yeah, um, I really like those as a as a fan. And then I was like really into the hardcore stuff as a kid, the ECW stuff, the fire, mm, and barbed gosh, wire, yeah. and. Stuff like that. The indies kind of do it too much for me today. Um, I'm not a big fan of the light tube. Uh, it's it's. I like the light tubes because they sound cool and they look cool, but it kind of like breaks the context for me. I'm like, we're in a fight to pin your opponent back to the ground. Why do you <laughs> want to shatter do you... <laughs> glass everywhere? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I buy it. I I just you know because everyone does it, but that's one of the things that kind of kills me. But um. Still a big fan of of weapons matches and gimmick matches when it's done correctly, tasteful in my yeah my. Uh, you ever break a weapon? Um, you had one broken on you in the white elephant match. Who? What? What was it? Uh, it, it was a lot of things. It was a it was a one of them big candy cane type ornament things. Oh yeah, uh, he hit me with that. Yeah, he, etc. Uh, broke it on your back. He he hit me in the leg and hit yeah, me that's in the back. What it was. yeah. yeah. Um, and then else? he stabbed you with the broken jagged edge. Did he? What? No. He did, yeah. He stabbed him? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Where? How did he stab you and you not be impaled? In his thigh. <laughs> I put uh, Sergeant Anderson through a table. Just uh, full disclosure, that didn't happen. <laughs> okay, I was about to say. I was like, <laughs> I was almost going to say, I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, I'll let him have this one. Um, nah, I'm joking. Um, in the hospital for that. No, thankfully. I mean, I haven't really used like a lot of weapons. Uh, oh, you know what? 
uh, Halloween Hardcore last year, it was me and Ziggy in a Caribbean death match where he had all the fruit. I love that match. And I jumped up and hit him in the head with a coconut, and the coconut broke and cracked and juice went everywhere and I felt so bad. Because you hit him in the head? I hit him in the head. Oh my gosh. And the coconut broke. Did he get a concussion? I thought he would have one, but he told me he was fine. Damn. I Hard head. Last time he was on the podcast, he said you jumped off the second rope, but I- I'm pretty sure it was the top rope. Yeah, no, it was. It was. I, I put the two clips together to promote the episode. I put the audio over it and it was like, no, you climbed up on the top. It's pretty good. Um, so when something breaks or breaks down or gets broken, what do you do? What, put, do, you, what do you do to push on? You uh, get some glue and put it back together. <laughs> but get some tape. Are you meaning as a at wrestling term? Yeah. You just keep working. You keep, keep working. working. You go. You go around it. And you figure out how to get to the finish and. You put on a show. I don't know. Never, you never stop. Work outside of the ring if you have to. There's Break a- more things. Or that. <laughs> that too. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Break the cameras so nobody can see this. Break the cameras. Break the audio. Break the fans. Break the chairs. Break the. Break. Break. Break the- wind. Just fart really loud. <laughs> don't. Uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> All right. Well, the fuse is getting short, so it's time for ABP. Always be plugging. Um, you can find me at Ben Greenback on Twitter, uh, Greenback Wrestling on Instagram, and just Greenback on Facebook. Michael? Underscore official arrow on Instagram. That is the only place you can find me, and you can see me here this Saturday. Well, uh, I don't know when this will come out. Saturday the 7th. Yeah, it'll probably be after that. <laughs> and you can also catch me at another date at another location which i'm about to get more specific and let you know so you can catch me uh the 14th here as well at aapw and slam portal on the 21st as well as well (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nice ladybird you can find me on instagram and twitter at wrestle ladybird i also have some matches in january and february and you can find those on my instagram and twitter i'll have them on both beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> well everybody that has been another episode of the buckle bomb and you have been blown up